Okay, so let's keep going. So in this lesson, we'll see a little bit more about containers and how we can alter our containers and better interact with them. So as we saw in the last lesson, the way that we booted up, let's just do Docker image ls, our ghost container was by doing docker run followed by the name of the image. And then we said we wanted to essentially listen in to the port where our that the main process, that website was running. So we said we wanted to listen in uh, on our host computer at port 8889, just making that up essentially. And we wanted this port to listen in to the container on port 2368. And that's this is where the website in the container is running. Now, what you'll notice occurs is when we do this, it then essentially goes through all these steps of booting up our website, creating all these tables, kicking off a cron job. And I guess the question is, well, how and why does something like that occur? So we can get a bit of a hint if we go back and look a little bit more of that at the image. Remember, I told you that this inspect command right, is pretty useful. And we can do docker image, it should be, right? The name of the resource first, then the name of the command, and then finally the image. So that would be uh, ghost. And then if you scroll up, you'll see this command, okay? So this command actually kicks off and is run every single time that we boot up our container. It's going to run the command in node current slash index dot js. You can see that another way to see this is by going to the Docker file. Um, so if I type in Docker ghost, and then this is the official image, and I'm just going to press Command F so I can bring up the uh, finder in Chrome, and then I'll type Docker file. And you can see here's the Docker file links. And this is the one we use, right? Latest. Now this is the doc this, you know, we'll learn more about this later. Uh, but this essentially builds the image. And the last step occurs every time we boot up our container. And that's that when you do docker run followed by the image, what you're essentially doing is you're calling this command. And this command is what's going to boot up our website and kick off the, all those migrations that we saw when we did docker run-p8889. Uh, 8889. Uh, 2368 ghost then we see all these steps that's occurring because of this command now one thing that's kind of interesting is that we can alter this command we can replace it uh, from the command line so normally it would run node current index.js but if we want we can say okay let's boot up a container and let's list the contents of the files inside that container. So I'm going to do docker run ghost ls. So this is you know, the command to run a container, but now this ls on the end essentially overrides this kickoff command, this command, to then instead run ls. So let's do that. And you can see this is listing the contents, not in my host directory, but rather booting up a container and then listing the contents of uh, what's inside that container. Now, if we try to find this container, if, like I do docker container ls, you'll see there is no container running, which is kind of interesting. The reason why is because Docker, when Docker completes the task assigned, it then immediately, by default, will stop and remove the container. So at one moment there was a container booted up, and that container was booted up. Then we ran, then it ran ls. It listed the contents, uh, and then, uh, but then once this task was completed, it removed the container automatically. The reason why this didn't happen uh, with our website when we did Docker run p slash ghost, the reason why we see a running container here this time, is because well this task of command node current index.js said to boot up a website and when websites are booted up the next thing they do is essentially just stay listening until you tell it to stop 
right? They stay listening for users to reach the website. And so because of that, this task is never finished until we you know, can essentially kill the website. And then the, and then the task is complete. And now if I say Docker container ls again, you'll see now the container is automatically destroyed now that the, the task is over. So what's the point here? We saw that you know we can do docker run ghost and override the default command that this will boot up a new container but then with containers when the when the task is complete docker will automatically shut down and remove the container so here we booted up a container the task is complete we listed the files and now that container no longer exists so why does docker do this well essentially the point is that the whole purpose of these containers is to execute some sort of process or some sort of task. So when the task is done, we don't need the container anymore. The whole, the whole purpose for this container existing is just to accomplish some task. When that task is complete, you know, remove this guy. So that's the idea, is to think of these containers as very lightweight. Now, one thing that can be frustrating about this is, you know, maybe we want to peer inside uh, the container. So let, let's see this. Let's go back here. So what I'm saying is, you know, what if we were like, you know, here's, imagine this is our container. We want to like connect to this container, you know, and, and maybe peer inside and dig around in here. How can we do that? Well, the main way I know is we can run bash essentially inside the container. So let's try that. So I'm going to do docker container run. Remember, I could just do docker run, docker run goes followed by bash all right now there's no error here and you might remember you might have seen that it does pause for a second and what happened was it booted up the container it ran the bash command which will connect me to the shell inside the container but once it did that the task was complete so it, it killed the container automatically so if we want to stay connected to bash the way that we can do that is by doing docker run dash it, the name of the image, then bash. So notice that the pattern stays the same. It's Docker. We could have put the word, the resource name container here, followed by the command, then the image, and before, between the command and the image, this is where we put the flag. Then finally, we're saying we want to override the default process. So that's why we then complete this with bash. Now I'm going to press return, and there I am, right? So now you can see where where am I right now? I'm inside the Docker container, essentially. So I can now dig around, which is pretty cool, and like do anything that I normally might do uh, from my, I guess this is a directory, but like I can CD inside this directory. I got CD, and so let's go into the content directory. So now I'm in the content directory. Looks like there's nothing in there, maybe because you know, I did not create any content at this point. I can maybe go to this content.ridge. They told me that was a directory and dig in around here. So this is pretty cool. Um, if I want to get out of this, you can just type exit. And now uh, we are you know, no longer in a container. If I do Docker container ls, I'm no longer in there. Okay. So what do we just see? We saw that we can execute a command, docker run ghost bash, and then say stay connected with this dash IT flag. And that basically means this IT is for like, listen for the input and be able to send in uh, some commands as well. All right, the next thing we wanna show is when you have, this, there's other ways essentially to play around with a container uh, and to interact with it. And what we can do, instead of overriding a command, what we could do is boot up ghost. So let's maybe do that. So docker run, we can just do docker run ghost. We don't, we don't need to visit it. So do docker run ghost. Now let's go to maybe a new tab and let's look at our running containers. Now we can see, okay, we do have this container running, which makes sense, right? Because this task is not complete. It's the task is essentially to listen for incoming requests from users. So it's still doing that. And because of that, this container is staying alive. Now we can, another way to get into this container is with the exec command. So now we have this running container and this time we will do docker exec. 
this. So the exec command is to execute a command against a container. So if I want to say like, hey, on this container, run ls, see the, the files, this will now, it won't boot up a new container, but rather it will run this command against this running container. And that's what's happening here. The other thing I can do, of course, is I can say, let's run the bash command and let's interact uh, with the container. So now this time I'm interacting. I'm not booting up a new container. Rather, I'm interacting with this running container. Okay? So I first identify the container name, tender Pascal, and then I'm saying let's execute the bash command against this container and stay interactive with it. And now I'm inside this running container. Okay? So if I want to, again, I can dig around, you know, I can mess around. Um, once I once I like exit exit from here, there's still a running task, so this container still exists. So Dr. Container ls staying around because its purpose for being has not stopped yet. And then if I kill, you know, shut down the website, then this container will stop. Or another way I can do this is just by doing docker container stop followed by the name of the container. Okay, now one thing you may be wondering is that, okay, if these containers are just automatically destroyed when the work is complete, how do I save any of my work? So I just want to make that clear. That is what occurs, right? Any work that you do is automatically destroyed when your work is complete. Now, we'll talk about how to get around that in the next lesson. But for right now, let's just make sure we understand that. Remember that an image is these stackable files. And then we have this writable container on top whenever we like boot up or double click on that container. Whenever we boot it up, then we can interact with, with that software. So here I'll do docker run followed by the name of the image, which is ghost. And then I'll do that bash command, or you can also do like, I'll just do bash. And then here is where I put in the flag, right? Between the command and the name of the image. So I'll do dash it. Then I press return. Now I'm inside the container and I can like mess around with it. I can maybe like create new files, index.html. We can see there it is. The second I press exit though, that will kill the container and this will essentially be lost, this writable letter. And I'll just start from the beginning again. So let's see that. Right now I have index.html in here. If I exit and then I boot up a new container, we can type ls and now I do not see index.html. So that leads to the question, how do we save our work that we perhaps perform in a writable, writable container? If I'm running ghost and someone creates a new blog post, how do I save that blog post? So we'll talk about that in the next lesson.